Hello everyone and welcome back to the third tutorial on Bash Scripting. Today we will learn about variables and data types in Bash Scripts. So what are variables? A variable is a container that can hold information that you can use throughout your script. You create a variable, then assign its value and then refer to that variable by its name to use the stored information. So basically variables allow you to store and manipulate data within a bash script. This data can be of various types including strings, integers, floating point numbers, arrays and maybe some even complex data structures. But before start scripting, there are some conventions on variable name that you should remember while defining a variable name. These are a variable name should start with a letter or underscore. Variable names in bash script typically written in lowercase letters. This helps differentiate them from environment variables that I will explain later and these environment variables are often written in uppercase letters. If a variable name consists of multiple words, then separate them with underscore. Variable names should only contain letters, numbers and underscores. Using special characters in variable names can cause some unexpected problems. And do not use reserved keywords like if, for, while in bash while defining a variable name because they have some special meanings in bash scripts. So now let's start scripting. So let's open the terminal. Uh, so you can press Alt, Ctrl and T to open your terminal. And for this tutorial, I will be using Vim Editor to create and edit my script files. So first let's create a script file. Let's say name it variable.sh. So I am in my Vim Editor. Now to get into insert mode, press I. Now the first thing that you need to add is the cbank tag. Now you can add some comments. Now let's define a variable. Uh, let's name it name. Now you need to assign its value. So for this you need to use the equal sign to assign its value. This value can be anything from text to numbers. So let's say name equals to joy. It's a string. Once your variable is filled with a value, now you can use it by using the dollar sign followed by the variable name. So let's print something like hello joy, welcome to the tutorial. And for this, I am going to use the echo comment. So hello. And I am going to use this variable. So for this, put the dollar sign, then the variable name. This will actually print the name joy. Now if you may wonder why this dollar sign is used. When you include the dollar sign before a variable name, bash performs a variable expansion. This means that bash replaces the variable reference with its value at runtime. This dollar sign helps bash distinguish between regular text and variable references. Without the dollar sign, Bash would treat the variable name as a literal text rather than a reference to the variable's value. So now let's save and execute this script. So to exit insert mode, press escape. Then to save the file, press colon w and hit enter. Let me open another terminal where I will run my script. So here I have this file variable.sh. Now I have to make it executable and for this I am going to use this chmod then plus x then the file name. So the color of this file should change to green or it could depends on your system environment. So now let's execute this file. So it prints hello joy welcome to the tutorial. So as you can see in the script file I put dollar name but in when I run this file, it replaces the variable with its value. But what if you actually want to print something that starts with a dollar sign? Let's say I want to actually print this whole sentence. Hello, dollar name, welcome to the tutorial. To do this, we can use the single quote. There is a basic difference between single and double quote. So let's go to our Vim editor and change this double quote to single quote. Now save it and let's execute the file. 
so now as you can see it prints hello dollar name welcome to the tutorial it doesn't replaces the variable with its value so why is this happening in bash single quotes preserve the literal value of each character within the quotes this means that variables and special characters inside double quotes are treated as plain text and not expanded on the other hand double quotes allow for variable expansion and interpretation of certain special characters but can we do it using the double quote also yes we can and for this you need to use backslash before the dollar sign so let's do it and put a backslash before the dollar sign and save and run it so in this case also it prints the hello dollar name welcome to the tutorial so this is just to show you the difference between single and double quote in bash scripting now let's imagine a scenario where you are scripting a process that requires user input like their name age or some preferred settings in that case one can use read commands it allows you to pause your script wait for the user to enter information and store that input in a variable for further use so let's see how to use it suppose we want to prompt the user for their name and then greet them the basic syntax for using the read command is very simple we just use read followed by the name of the variable where we want to store the input so let's go to our vim editor and let's write something echo please enter your name and then read the variable so just type read and then the variable name so this is in our case is name and then print the same uh, hello name welcome to the tutorial okay so now let's save it and let's execute this file so now as you can see the script pauses and it is waiting for the user input so let's put some name so let's say joy and if you hit enter then it will print oh sorry i made a mistake so you have to remove these backslashes from the script so now if you again run this and enter the variable value then it will print hello joy welcome to the tutorial let's clear the screen using clear command but we can also make this script more compact we can use some options with the read command here i am going to use the option dash p with the read command to prompt the message to the user before reading input okay so let's see how to do it so enter into the insert mode and then let's delete this line okay now to prompt something use dash p and then the message say let's say please enter your name and then the variable name so let's save it and let's run the file so again it shows please enter your name so just enter your name joy and it will print the message hello joy welcome to the tutorial now there are several other options available that you can use according to your need with read command for example sometimes we need to read password securely without echoing the input back to the terminal and for this we can use the dash s option with the read command so let's say echo enter your password and then read the password but i don't want the input to echo back to the terminal so that's why i'm going to use dash s and then the variable name password and after entering the password let's print another message so let's save this file and run it so it shows please enter your password so enter your password and then hit enter so whenever you enter your password in enter it will print the message password enter thank you but it will not prompt the password you just enter to the screen now suppose we need to reassign the value of a variable that is we want to change the value of a variable after it has already been assigned a value let's see how does it works 
So now let's say we have a variable named count whose initial value is 5. Later in our script, we want to change the value of count to 10. So the initial value of count is 5 and echo this message. Let's say and then we want to change its value to 10. So again, you have to redefine its value using the same method count equals to 10 or whatever you want to put and then echo the value. Final value of count is the last value we entered. So let's run this script. So initially the value of the count was 5 and then you reassign its value and then the value becomes 10. This variable reassignment is important because it allows our script to be dynamic and responsive to changing conditions. We can use variable reassignment to update the value of a variable based on calculations, user input or some other factors. So basically this variable reassignment overrides the previous value of a variable. Now suppose for some reason I want to completely remove the variable count from the environment which means that the variable count no longer exists and cannot be accessed or used in the script further. This is called unsetting a variable. So for this you need to use the command unset. Unset count and let's again print the value of count. So let's save it and execute the file. So as you can see the initial value of count was 5 then it changes to 10 then we answer the value of this variable count and for now it doesn't contain any information or any value in this script. Now in bash there are already some predefined system variables that contain information about the system environment user session or other system related properties. These variables are automatically set by the cell and are available for use in bash scripts. System variables can be accessed like any other variable in bash by prefixing their names with the dollar sign and any system variable names written in capital letters only. So let's illustrate the use of the system variable with an example script. Suppose we want to display information about the current user and working directory. So let's go to our Vim editor and let's make this script. So let's save this file and run it. So in this script, I use some system variables, user, home, pwd and cell, which uh, shows the current user, home directory and current working directory and default cell. So this is how you can use the system variables and you have to remember that these system variables, the name of these system variables are always in capital letters and most of the system variables are only in read only mode meaning you can't directly change their values within your script. So that's all you need to know about variables in bash scripting. Remember mastering variables is key to wrangling data in your scripts. Now what if you want to use these variables to perform some calculations. That's where arithmetic operations come in. In the next video I will discuss how to use bash for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So be sure to subscribe my channel so you don't miss the next tutorial. In the meantime, if you have any questions about variables, leave a comment below and I will be happy to help. So see you in the next video.